Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on life through music. Thank you for stopping by. Well, come in again today. You're very, very welcome. How great to see you all here. I trust you enjoyed my last video on Lady A and through their song, I Need You Now. We looked at, no, we looked at those lonely moments we have with someone in our lives, but we're just feeling a bit lonely and we need them right now. So that kind of feeling. So I trust you found that one encouraging. We're going from there to 1983, Borkham Hills. We're looking at a church today, guys. Now, before you turn off, <laughs> please don't turn off. Because you see that plant behind me there, right? Um, well, that plant used to have like three or four leaves less. And by the way, I call the plant Boris. I don't know why, I just feel like a bit of a Boris. Well, Boris decided to get an extra, extra leaf a little while back. Now, he's decided to get a couple more. And I think the thing I want to talk about today is this thing called growth, this thing about organic, natural growth. Because Brian and Bobby Houston um, thought, well, actually, we reckon we can do something here. And so they decided to form Hillsong Church back in 1983. Now, from those early days of you know, hiring out a venue and you know, taking your gear in every day and all the rest of it, uh, this, this church has grown to having campuses in South Africa, Russia, Sweden, Canada, Mexico, and there's 16 locations in the United States of America. In fact, um, when we went to New York, uh, we went to one of the churches over there. And um, as of 2018, there's 80 churches worldwide. Um, now, this sort of growth does not happen. It doesn't normally happen like this, not in churches anyway. And I think what Hillsong have been able to do um, is realise what their strengths are. Now, it was when um, when they realised that actually um, music is one of the things these guys do really, really well, and there are a couple of uh, key people in, the, in that movement as well, that, that attracted the young people. You know what young people are like? Yeah, whatever, I don't care. Well, actually, that's not true. Young people do care. They really do. It's just that uh, they're, they're there now and we were then. But they do care. But when you can engage them in such a way, some pretty amazing things happen. And this is what happened um, with Hillsong. Now, where, where I really want to talk about Hillsong today, apart from the incredible you know, reaching out to people that they do, because you can't be a church and not do that, particularly churches as big as these guys are, um, they realised that music was a bit of a thing. In fact, um, it was it was Jeff Bullock uh, who came in 1987. So the church started in 1983. So four years later, Hillsong suddenly realised, hang on a minute, we might have a bit of a thing going here with music. Because um, before this period, um, church music wasn't wasn't that exciting. Not if you're a young person, we didn't have had hymns. There were a few other bits and pieces coming through. Um, the scripture and song music book series came out a little bit earlier, but the time was right for something new. And uh, it was Jeff Bullock um, in 1987 who have written some of the songs that are still sung in churches today. Um, just, just stop for a second. When you write a song, often it just stays in your church. Or it may not even get in your church at all. But this guy has written songs that have not just transformed Hillsong, they've transformed Australia and they've transformed the world in many, many ways. Songs like The Power of Your Love, and we'll get into another one, The Power of Your Love and The Power and the Glory and, and um, a few like that. Um, churches have really embraced this guy's songs big time. I suppose when you got the, suppose, the strength of Hillsong behind you to put out music books and things like that, um, it's not going to be long before, you know, a movement got created in Australia. And this is absolutely what happened here. Well, um, please do not deny the impact and the power and influence of Jeff Bullock. He's been an absolute um, powerhouse composer, um, writing songs, writing new songs, writing more intimate songs about God, I suppose, that had never been written. And because of that, the Australian church, Australian churches, Australia wide, I've lost track out of the number of times I've played a Jeff Brooks song in churches. I just lost track. 
And every time I write, every time I play one of this guy's songs, I just, something just swells up and with me, within me, and I think, wow, I'm just this is really, really good because the words are just so honest and raw, and and, and there's some insecurity in these lyrics as well, which is really good because you know what, um, our strength often, you know, we think I'm strong and I'm really, really good, but sometimes strength comes in our insecurity, the things we're not sure about, and when you're a songwriter, guess what you write about. And so Jeff Bullock um, transformed, revolutionised um, church music in Australia, absolutely. If it wasn't for this guy, um, I don't know where we would have gone. And many things have developed after that. And so um, I've got a live version of Have Faith in God just um, below, O oh Lord, You Lead Me by Still Waters. It's a beautiful film. Don't we all want stillness in our lives? Don't we want that peace in our lives? Don't we want the thing that we can just go... Oh, I can relax here. Or well, Jeff would argue faith in God is the thing that does that because it fills the gap that many things, other things, don't. So we've got a live version of Have Faith in God. Now, um, welcome to the Hillsong Arena. You know, it's massive. It's huge. Um, everything. And one of the things about Jeff Bullock is, you know, to be to be a um, music director of a church such as Hillsong, you just don't like suck a few, you pick a few songs each week and, and that's it. You're shaping the culture of the church. You're shaping its culture. Um, Jeff Bullock was behind um, many, many of the conferences that Hillsong have actually put on. These conferences have been absolutely huge. And uh, he is right behind all of those things, establishing pretty much a, a new culture for church in Australia and and so um, when you look at the number of people here you know churches are churches okay lifting your hands means it's just a way of honoring I suppose honoring your faith people have got their eyes closed people know this song really really well I played this song stacks and stacks and stacks of times it's just something about it which I absolutely love so we've got a live version of have faith in God now if you're not a church person you have faith in something. I'll, I'll just leave that one. You have faith in something. So you know what? It might be in yourself. It might be in the universe. Whatever it is, we all have faith in something. Because um, faith is a thing that, that says we're going to walk out into the world today and we're going to make a difference. That's what faith actually is. So Jeff Bullock um, was, was worship um, director for quite a few years. And, and being at a position such as this one, you do wear out over time. And it was around 1995 we decided, I, I think I've done what I needed to do here. I've written some amazing songs. I've changed the, changed the world in lots of ways. I'm going to give it, give it over. And then into another significant person, Darlene Check. Now, Darlene, um, I have done Darlene in the past. So just quickly again, um, it was her song, Shouts to the Lord. And again, um, this is a song, Mountains and Rivers, all saying how amazing God is. Um, if you look, if you look at um, if you look at uh, the world around you, just look at the trees, look at the sky, just look at how beautiful this world is, and how it all just interacts so so well. So shout to the Lord uh, again. The story goes that uh, when Darlene wrote this song, she thought, oh, you know, it's not that it's not that very it's not that good. She went to Jeff Bullock, who was the music director at the time, and said, hey, Jeff, got this song, but can I please get you to turn around as I play it to you because it's not that good. And as the story goes, Jeff heard this song and said. Darlene, that song's amazing. <laughs> you might have one of these songs, one of the best songs written of all time right here. And so it became a staple again in churches. I've lost track of the number of times I've played this song as well. The chorus is just amazing. It just lifts so, so well. So Darlene Check was a music coordinator from 1996 to 2007, building on a building on the legacy of Jeff Bullock. That absolutely, so we've got a live version of Shouts, Shouts to the Lord. So after 2007, and it was at this point, um, uh, Hillsong was growing. Um, you know, it, it had a lot of a lot of campuses, Santa campuses around the world, all with the same personality, but also believing in, I suppose, a churches where music, you know, production and excellence in production, um, just making sure that God is at the centre, and all the rest of the stuff that you need to do when your church is influential as Hillsong is. And so there has been a variety of people being involved in Hillsong since that time. And, you know, it was in 2018, um, this song, What a Beautiful Name, uh, really ushered in a new genre of Christian of, of worship music completely. Into music so much, much more intimate um, and just so more compelling. 
And so, What a Beautiful Name actually won a Grammy Award. This song was won by, uh, this song was written by Ben Fielding and Brooke Ling Ling Lingerwood. And so, we've got a live version of What a Beautiful Name. Um, again, as you just, if you're not a churchgoer, and probably many of you people on my channel are, um, again, I'm trying to be respectful to you guys as well. As, as you just listen to these songs, just try and imagine yourself being there. I think this is the thing about churches. It doesn't really work when it's when it's videoed like this. It just, it's just not the same as being there. Being there is just, you, you miss the feeling of it. And and um, and What a Beautiful Name is an absolutely stunning song really in so many ways. You Have No Rival is one of the lines. And, and really, it's just saying that, you know, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, our King. Um, and so we've got What a Beautiful Name as well. That song won a Grammy Award, so that's how significant that particular song is. Um, and so I think, as well as just... Now, I could, Hill Songs had many things said about it as well. I'm not going to get into that because I still want to talk about how, how much of a positive influence Hill Song has been in, in the world of Christian music and worship music in Australia and the world in particular. And I think um, we we need to we can jump to being critical so quickly, without realizing that people like Jeff Bullock and Darling Check actually changed the world big time. And because of that, um, you know, churches have never been the same since. And I think um, the thing I just want to take out of today, I think, is the fact that we don't always know at the start um, how things are going to go. You know, when Bob Brian and Bobby started Hill Song, they didn't know how it was going to go. Didn't know how it was going to go. But they've got a church with they've got a got a church with eighty campuses worldwide now. That's pretty pretty amazing. In fact, between nineteen ninety and twenty twenty two, thirty two years, forty albums. You know, um, it's very easy when you've got the technology that Hillsong has got to actually um, record things live. The musicians are pretty pretty good in Hillsong. Um, when you play in churches, it's not about it's not about how being how good you are, even though you need to be that. It's about being in tune with what's happening in the church on the day because you're complementing what's happening as opposed to performing. This is the real difference about playing playing in churches. It's the why becomes really, really important. And certainly for me, who played hundreds of times in churches myself, uh, I understand the why is really, really important. The minute you become a form performer, you just lose it. So you've got to kind of balance all of that because when you've got lights and big sound and big screens, you can get into that zone really, really quickly. And you've got a big, massive congregation as well. You can you can get there really, really quickly. So I'm sure they always do their checks and balances around this sort of stuff because worship is not performance. And so um, from little things, big things grow to quote Paul Kelly. Um, and I think... Um, when you put faith in there as well, some amazing things can happen. And this is what's absolutely happened with Hillsong. And so um, if you're not a church goer, I'm not saying to you, hey, let's just go to church. I'm leaving that totally up to you. But can, can just as I'm open to people of all sorts of beliefs and diversity, I might, my hope today is that you'll be open as well as you listen to these three clips in the description below. And I've also included my last video from Lady A. So if you want to recap on her, Feel free. Just so you goes to show that we go from one genre to another, John, John, one genre to another. Here, it's just what we do. And I was up to Hillsong. What can I say? I'm doing working my way through H's at the moment. You might be thinking, well, a lady A doesn't start with H. Well, I know because I actually heard had it as Hillary Scott. I didn't realise that Hillary is part of Lady A in that song, which I just wondered who sang it. So that's why we got Lady A um, there. So um, the links, thanks the three, those four uh, links are below. Well, that's it for today. Um, thanks for hanging around. If you come back for another one, or this is your first time, the Life Reflections to Music. Great to see you all here. Thank you for coming back. Next time we're going to go on to the Hollies. So until then, I'll catch you around. Bye for now.